Hey guys, welcome to our first grammar video. Our first grammar unit this year is proofreading marks. Every time we go through one of these units, I will give you a list of objectives. These are the things that I am intending for you to learn as you're going through this unit. So the objectives for proofreading. By the end of this unit, and yes, I have a cheat sheet, you will understand that editing, proofreading, and copy editing are all the same thing. They are synonyms. They basically mean marks that you would use to correct a piece of writing for grammar. We like to use standard proofreading marks so that it's not confusing, basically. If your peer edits your paper or if your teacher edits your paper, you know exactly the marks that they're making and what kind of changes you should make to your writing. So by the end of this unit, you should be able to use the proper proofreading marks to indicate an error in writing, and you should also be able to read proofreading marks so that you can make the appropriate corrections in your own writing. So today, I'm essentially just going to go through the list of proofreading marks and show you how to use them. So first, we have spelling errors. The way that we show a spelling error is to circle the word that is misspelled, and yes, that is not how you spell misspelled, and put an S, P, and a period above it. Capitalization is the next one. So if a word needs to be capitalized, you simply put three lines under the letter that is to be capitalized. Lowercase. If a letter is capitalized and it should not be, all you do is put a slash through that letter. When you need to add quotation marks to something, you need to use the upside down caret. So, you rock, he said, that's a piece of dialogue. It needs a quotation mark there and a quotation mark there. It's supposed to be after the comma. If we need to add an apostrophe, again, we use the upside down caret on top of where the apostrophe needs to go. You're awesome! We need an apostrophe to show that this means you are awesome. If we need to add a comma, in a sentence, we use the upside down caret underneath where the comma needs to go. First, eat the apple. Well, first is an introductory word, so we need to put a comma right there. This works for periods, colons, semicolons, exclamation marks, and question marks. You are amazing! I would probably put an exclamation point there, and then I just need to circle it. That way I can point out to whosoever paper it is that they're missing that punctuation. If I need to reverse some words or some letters, then I use this little reverse do. When we need to add a piece of punctuation to the end of a sentence or in the middle sometimes, all we have to do is add the punctuation and then circle it. This works for periods, colons, semicolons, exclamation marks, and question marks. You are amazing! I would probably put an exclamation point there, and then I just need to circle it. That way I can point out to whosoever paper it is that they're missing that punctuation. If I need to reverse some words or some letters, then I use this little reverse doohickey. You can do it with straight lines or you can do it with a curved line. So he too ran the store doesn't make sense. We needed to say, he ran to the store. We need to reverse, reverse. So if I do this little number, it shows me that I need to reverse these words. When I need to delete a word, I get to use a little squiggly pigtail. He ran, ran to the store. Too many rans. I can just do this, and that shows me that I need to delete that word. If I need to add a space in between letters, or in between words, I can either use a slash in between the words or I can use a hashtag. I prefer using the hashtag because it's a little easier to see. So she laughs a lot. Guys, this is a problem. I see this word a lot. Really, it should be two words. So if I put a hashtag right there, you know that that needs a space. If you need to close a space, if there is a word that should be one word but it was written as two, then you use the sideways parentheses. It was within him. Well, within is actually one word. 
So I go like this to show that I need to close the gap. It was within him. Another time we close the space, sometimes I see when you're typing that you put a space in between the last word and the punctuation. So I might use it there to show that the period or the punctuation at the end of the sentence needs to be right next to the word. The last proofreading mark that we use often is the new paragraph mark. It looks like a backward P with two lines. So when we're writing in dialogue, fun trick if you didn't know it, each time the speaker changes, it should be a new paragraph or a new line. Good morning, said Billy. Um, it's not morning, remarked Jill. Well, this part that Jill says should be a new paragraph. So right here on top of that, I would do my backwards P. That shows you that I need a new paragraph there. When you arrive in class on Friday, I will give you the packet of work that goes along with proofreading marks. And when you're ready to take the quiz, you just need to let me know. I look forward to doing more of these videos with you. And if you have any suggestions, please tell me. I can't think of a not awkward way to end this video, so I'm just going to end it right here.